All right, guys, today I'm going to show you how to make um, a simple Lego piece. It's a two-by-four piece that you're uh, supposed to be modeling. Um, I am not going to provide you with perfect dimensions on this, so don't copy my measurements. I'm just doing this to show you some tools of Inventor and to kind of give you a strategy as to how to tackle this uh, part. So uh, here we go. You can follow along with me. But uh, again, don't use my measurements, and I'm not going to be talking the whole time. I'm just going to uh, kind of give you... A little bit of an overview into which uh, tools I want you to use. So I'm just going to start by making the uh, rectangular portion of the uh, Lego piece, um, and then I'm going to do the the studs um, afterwards. So I am going to make sure to have everything constrained properly, even if the dimensions are not uh, correct, um, just to give you a good example of how I'd like it to be done. Okay, so this is going to be the face. So I started off by doing a rectangle. I'm going to put a new 2D sketch up top, and this is where I'm going to start drawing my circles. Because my pegs are offset, or my studs are offset, those circles from the side, what I want to do is I want to pull these rectangular lines in, create a border for myself. So to use these lines and to use the offset tool, which doesn't work, you have to make sure you click on Project Geometry first. And that's going to bring all the lines from that uh, solid part up into the current sketch. So project geometry, click on the face, and then offset. We can click on one of these lines, move your mouse forward, and we can start giving ourselves that, uh, you know, that little border around all those uh, studs. Again, don't follow my me measurements. Who knows if they're right or not? So I'm going to put down the dimensions of one of the studs, and then. I'm going to start by laying these in all four corners. To do that, I'm going to use the tangent tool. You've used this in math before, hopefully, or in geometry. Um, but what it does is it lies a, uh, it puts a circle and it onto a line, and it connects with one point. So watch. I click on tangent, click on my circle, click on this line, and it's going to be snapped on there. Now I can still move my circle left and right, um, but that circle is locked on. I'm going to click on tangent and do the same thing over here. Perfect. I'm going to make another circle and also do the same thing. Tangent to here, tangent to here. And I'm just going to put all these circles over there. Here to here, and here to here. And my last one. Now, there's also more efficient ways of doing this, but this is just meant to you know, get you started. OK. Now we need to also put uh, another four circles in the middle here. So to do that, I know that they're going to be the same size. If you move your mouse over, you'll see how they want to snap onto the centers, which is uh, convenient, but it didn't actually put that dimension in. So what I want to do first is I want to make this tangent up here. And then I need to dimension the distance between these two. So I'm going to use my calipers. I'm going to measure the overall distance between the two circles and then subtract the uh, diameter of one of them, or the radius of both of them. Okay, so from he dimension from here to here, 0.5 minus 0 0.190. 0 0.5 minus 0.19. I think I hit the wrong button. 0 0.5 minus 0 0.19. Oh, yeah. Perfect, so that's 310. And I'm going to do the same thing over here. I'm going to make this circle tangent. And then I'm going to dimension these centers. And this time I already know that it's about 310. Okay, perfect. So I'm going to do the same thing down here. Um, here. Oh, that's not correct. I want to make these tangent first and then dimension, and then I want to do one more, and dimension from here to here. Okay. Now this one still is giving me problems. It looks like I didn't hit tangent. So tangent here to here, and that should work out. We are fully constrained. Finish sketch. Extrude, and I want to extrude all of these circles the same height 
And you can take that measurement by using the back end of your dial caliper. And again, don't follow mine because mine are not necessarily correct. I'm just trying to make it look proportional. Okay. So now we have this as a solid, which is perfect. But what I want to do now is I want to flip this thing over and work on the hollow bottom with three circles in it. Now to do that, I want to use a tool called Shell. Shell will remove material from the inside of a part, and it will keep the same thickness of material all the way around. So on your Lego piece, if you flip it over and you look at the inside, you can see that there's like a shell all around that's about the same thickness. So I'm going to click on Shell. I'm going to click on this back face, and it defaults to 0.1. But that's not the thickness of my Lego piece. I'm going to measure one of the walls on the side and use that. And what's nice is you can even see all the little dimples of the studs from the other side. And if you look at your Lego piece, like the physical piece, you can see that too. Okay. And then lastly, there are three hollow circles in the back of your Lego. Um, I'm going to model those too. So I'm going to put a new sketch down on the bottom here. Okay. And I'm going to project geometry of this middle piece. And the reason I'm going to do that is because I want to put a center line, a reference line, going all the way across here, but centered. So I click on line. And I move my mouse up and down until it turns green. I'm going to put that line right across there. Now, because I'm not going to use this to actually extrude, I want to make this a dashed line because it's just a reference line. So to do that, I'm going to click on it, go up here. And this little bird foot looking line is called a construction line. And that allows us to use this to help plan other lines that we're going to eventually extrude. So what I want to do now is I want to pick on my circle, and I want to click somewhere on this line, and I want to draw one of my circles. Point, ooh, that's not right. Let's go point, point 0.185. I'm going to put another one over here. We'll, uh, we're going to assume that they're all the same diameter, because we're going to measure them. And then I am going to make sure that this circle, this middle one, is right in the center. So to do that, I'm going to draw another construction line. And this time, I'm going to snap on these two center lines. And then what I can do is I can drag and drop that so it's locked right in the center. Then for these lines, for these circles, I want to measure the distance apart, whoops, which I've shown you how to do before. Okay. Um, again, don't use my geometry because it's probably not going to be, or don't use my numbers. They're not going to be correct. I want you to do your own measuring. Okay. Now, if you look at the, um, if you look at the circles under your Lego piece, they are hollow as well. So I can show you another trick of doing this. If you hit finish, we extrude all of these, and I'm going to extrude them all, extrude them all the way up to this top surface. So to do that, instead of adding a number, I'm going to change my extents right here to change. Instead of typing in a distance, I'm going to click 2. And that allows us to click on the face that you want your extrusion to line up with and hit OK. Now, these are supposed to be hollow. So to make them hollow, I'm going to use the shell function again. I'm going to measure the thickness. OK. And it looks like 0.03, maybe 30 thousandths. I'm going to type that in, and I'm going to click here, here, and here, and then click on OK. And now I have my finished Lego piece. Now I want to turn this thing red or yellow. So go up to default, click on yellow, and now this is what your Lego piece should look like when it is done. You do not have to do the middle rectangle, like webbed piece. Um, if you wanted to, you could click on Start 2D Sketch, place another sketch down here, and you could dimension, you know, a uh, a rectangle, you know, going across here. Oh, we don't want to do it that way. We're going to do it this way. Okay, I want to snap to the center of my circle if I do that. So I'm going to project geometry of my circle. Now I have that nice line, and I'm going to draw a rectangle that goes from that side to this side. You know, I can take my measurement of the circle width, ah, or the 
rectangle width right here. I don't know how big it is. I'm just kind of making up numbers here. Um, and then I can also hit this trim button here. And because I don't want this middle part, you don't see that in your Lego. I can trim that line and that line, hit finish sketch, and I should be able to extrude that and extrude that to whatever height we want it to be. And I'm just going to make up a number here. Uh, yeah, let's go 250 thousandths. Boom. And now that's actually what your Lego piece is supposed to look like. But you don't have to put these in. That's just extra if you want to be a perfectionist. So that is.